Shalom, Mishpacha, Shabbat Shalom to you. Okay, so I'm just putting this out as a little uh, exercise and a little encouragement for you on the night of the Sabbath. Uh, you'll get the main lecture tomorrow, but there were developments that happened within the last three or four days, well actually not even three or four days, in the last two days that are obviously have not been spoken about in the lecture. So I wanted to make sure that you get a little rift of that, what's going on. And then also I will give you something that will really encourage you to be able to you know, aspire you or inspire you to manifest your desires. First of all, first of all, there was a development yesterday in Saudi Arabia. There was an agreement that was made between the, the, the king of Saudi Arabia about 50 years ago and America. So the development was that this, this this particular contract or the agreement that was made 50 years ago came to an end yesterday, which is June the 13th. And now Saudi Arabia's present prince has told America that we will no longer hold to that agreement and we will no longer purchase or do business in dollars, U.S. dollars. Okay, so that's a huge, huge thing. I don't even think that that most of you understand what that really means, but I'll spell out a little bit what that means in a, in a second. So what that s spells out to is that, uh, let me let me give you some understanding. Saudi Arabia sells or exports about just, well, over $300 billion worth of oil every year. $300 billion is like almost over quarter of a trillion dollars, okay? Now, not all of it goes to America, of course. It goes all over the world. But America still imports oil from Saudi Arabia and some other, other countries like Venezuela. And the reason why they do that is because they shut down their own wells, probably to preserve them, and they're getting cheaper oil from the Middle East and, and Venezuela itself. So, you know, as an idea, I mean... What happened was that any any purchases, any sales that Saudi Arabia made and significant amounts of that money was invested in the American bond market. Okay, So Saudi Arabia would be getting interest on their money on bond yields and that can be anywhere between 3.5 to let's say 4.5%. Now, you know, it may not seem a lot over a hundred dollars for a hundred dollars. That's like saying three point four to three point five dollars. But what if you had a billion dollars? What if we had ten billion invested? What if we had a hundred billion invested? What if we had five hundred billion invested? Now you work out the interest of that that Saudi Arabia is picking up from the bond market, which is the American bond market. Okay, we are talking about staggering numbers on interest alone. American hegemony on the dollar, although it's not go going anywhere anytime soon, but it is eroding away slowly. So Saudi Arabia will stop purchasing the oil in dollars or selling the oil in dollars. Uh, so will many other countries that do, do business with America may also come to the conclusion that we don't want to do business in dollars. We want to do business in our own currency or maybe another currency or whatever they decide. There is always that going on. So whether, whether Saudi Arabia you know, sells oil to China in UN, maybe to Russia in rubles or, or whatever currencies they decide mm -hmm. to go between, that means they no longer have to hold a reserve of dollars. And that may have been in, in many billions of dollars of, of bank reserve. So not immediately, but over time, this comes to affect America's hegemony and it does erode America as a superpower. That means that America will no longer be able to hold itself as a superior power or as a superpower for a long time. You know, whether that means the next 10 years, the next decade, or maybe the next 20 years, America's value as a superpower will erode away and we can no longer qualify America as a superpower forever. Okay, now I keep saying this and people don't understand that when you commit crimes against humanity and America is guilty of that and I'm not saying American people 
but i'm saying the american leaders who sanction wars when you do wars and you kill innocent people on the ground babies children men and women you do commit crimes through your soldiers through your bombs through your missiles they do have a comeback there is a price to pay those are sins they are violations of god's law and god will hold you accountable don't ever think to yourself that you you did the korean war and you killed a million people you did the vietnam war and you killed many many people you did the iraq war out of you know total total lies and misinformation there were no massive weapons of destruction i believe even mr trump spoke about that one time that it was all a facade it was all a charade there was none and we should have never gone to war for that etc etc so the point being that you have to pay a price for it and that price is not going to be paid by the so called leaders is going to be paid by every american yes every american in some way shape and form the whole nation is judged when god judges god does not judge just one person he judges the whole nation why does god do that i think that that's really another topic for another time but i'm just giving you a brief of what's going on so that's the first development that happened the second development that happened uh, uk and uh, in america sent their war planes and they bombed yemen now here's the here's the the cracking joke what yemen did i believe it was last week or the week before whenever this happened they set up a factory to look like that this is a factory that's producing missiles by the way all the missiles over there were fake okay maybe supplied by china and fake missiles look like real the intelligence went to america hey there is a factory over here that's producing missiles and they are holding weapons over here and america non nonchalantly goes over there with his war planes and you know bombs that factory or into smithereens and then you know their intelligence was so weak that that yemenite soldiers used it as a trap to trap intelligence so called officers of both israel and america probably uk as well and they caught a whole network of those 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 so called people who were spying on yemen and they then broadcast that that we have caught the biggest spy network in our country that comprises of you know israel and america and they probably didn't name it and i'll probably say also uk and europe as well so that shows you that what capability yemen has so yemen has caught those people and in due course they 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 are saying that they will punish them as well uh again you know i don't know how much you know that in your news uh but that that report is pretty you know pretty rapidly spread over here you know in the east and in the middle east it's all over the place so that network is put to put down and now now of course they use that bait of that fake factory to catch all those people and those people by the way they are in government they are ministers they are politicians they are doctors they are lawyers in other words yemenite people maybe with dual nationalities maybe with single nationalities and they are part of this network have all been trapped and all been caught and so pretty much that network is shut down america has very poor i would say probably very poor to none intelligence from yemen that could be cited as credible intelligence for them to do their what they classify as their war effort so that's that and then then yemen i think it was today maybe or yesterday that yemen attacked or maybe last night yemen attacked american and british warships and actually penetrated their defense with their boats and you may have heard on the news oh we destroyed two you know yemen boats by the way there wasn't just two boats there were many boats that attacked those ships and they got through the defenses and they did some considerable damage to the warships now of course america is you know lip tight and uk is lip tight <laughs> they don't want to tell anybody what's going on so they haven't really shown any pictures of the damage and it was extensive damage so now that's that okay so that, this is the report for that 
So the next part of the report, I think, which is the important part, and I'm going to move away from the war part. Oh, yeah, now there's still a war part report. So Ukraine. Ukraine was given $50 billion aid. And by the way, that was money that was stolen from Russia. Russian assets were frozen. And then that money was used to give Ukraine for war for Russia to fight the war with Russia. In other words, if I, you know, sold, you know, if I, if I took your home and then I said, get lost and I sold it and gave the money to your neighbor, how would you feel about that? That's what America and Europe Union, European Union did yesterday. Okay. That I think, right, is a traversity that is so unjust that I don't know what to say about that. You know, when you take somebody else's property, somebody else's money that was legitimately invested in your businesses that you had sanctioned, and today you take that money and you give it to somebody else to fight against that person, I think is so, so wrong. It should not be allowed. But you know what? Might is not always right. If America thinks and UK thinks that might is right, they're going to learn that might is not always right. In due course, they're going to learn that. And they're going to be humbled. Okay, here's the biggest thing now. The biggest thing. The biggest thing <laughs> that happened is that Iran announced, and this also came in, you know, this happened just a few minutes ago, maybe a few, couple of hours ago, Iran announced that they're going to be testing their nuclear bomb. And they have instructed their scientists to conduct these tests as soon as, as fast as, as quick as possible. They are now a nuclear nation. Okay? They believe that they are a nuclear nation. So whatever bomb they have, they will test it out and you know who they're going to use it against. You know who. So <laughs> I don't think I need to spell that out. So having said that, that's where we are. We have come to a, we have come to a, a point in which we could have no return. Russia is placing its nuclear arsenal in surrounding European nation countries that are supportive of Russia. Okay, so we have already gone to a brink of what I might discuss, you know, discuss as World War Three. We're, we're, we're so close to the World War Three, and even more closer than the Cuba crisis, that it's unreal. It's unreal and it's unbelievable, but it's happening. It's happening right, right, right here. Okay, so you may have heard, or maybe you didn't hear, that the, uh, I believe it was the Prime Minister or maybe the President of uh, uh, Slovakia. I mean, I've been to Slo uh, Slovakia. It's a nice, beautiful country. And uh, they are actually more supportive of Russia than Europe. Because, you know, they have their own internal things to sort out and their own things to do. They are not in favor of Russian sanctions. They're not in favor of giving free money to Ukraine. You know, things that these people want to do, Europe wants to do, they don't want no part of that. Anyway, what happened was, this was pretty much sanctioned by Europe or some European leader. I don't know how much America is complicit in that in that statement, but they tried to assassinate the Prime Minister or the President of Slovakia. But of course, you know, he survived and he was severely injured and uh, he's... I think he's now kind of recovering from that incident. So this happened right under the noses of everybody in Europe. Can you believe that? You know, if, that if that had happened in a third world country, right, you were like, oh, well, it's okay. It's India, you know, oh, it's okay. It's Sri Lanka, you know, it's no problem. But no, it happened right under the nose. Oh, and come back to India. You see, even though Modi won the election, but he won it so poorly, so poorly, that he could not form his own strong government. He actually had to form a government with other leaders of other parties in question. So he was actually forming a weak government, a coalition type government. And uh, I believe that Mr. Modi has been put out of, uh, let's say, out of... Uh, remember I spoke about that, that Mr. Modi is under watch. And Mr. Modi has been put out of his power and out of his so-called you know, I don't know, arrogance, let's, let's just call it arrogance in quotations. More to come on that another time. So that's what's basically going on, uh, uh, you know, on the east side, a lot of things are happening, a lot of big changes are happening. 
and there are a lot of changes in America. Oh, yeah, and an investment advice. Uh, you know, take this investment advice carefully and take it educatedly. In other words, do your own research. This is a friendly advice. I'm not saying that you have to do this. I'm saying that you can do your own research if you feel that you have some money that you'd like to invest and if you, you know, if it goes, you know, if it goes belly up, you're okay with it. You could still, you know, buy your food, then fine. But what if it turned into millions of dollars? What then? Okay, think about that. But it's an advice still, you know, I've got nothing to gain from this. I'm, I'm not part of any, you know, any crypto agency or crypto company or, you know, any backenders. I don't get nothing out of this. I'm just giving you advice. Russia has already announced this. Russia is switching to, uh, I think the cryptocurrency in question is called, uh, let me have a look. Uh, let me have a look on my thing. What is it? What is that cryptocurrency called? So I can give you the name. Uh, uh, where is it? XRP. Okay, yeah, XRP. XRP is a cryptocurrency. Right now, it's priced at 46 cents, 46 pennies. So if you bought that for 46 pennies, which is less than half a dollar, you can, I would suggest you at least, if you if you say, oh, well, you know, Rabbi, I haven't got so much money, I'll still tell you to invest about $100. If you can, put about $100 worth in there. But if you are able to put more, then show, you know, assess your condition, assess your financial situation, and do accordingly. So that currency is already been touted by Russia to be used for their banking services. By the way, in America, unbeknownst to many people, this currency is already being used by some banks, like Bank of America, and some other banks are already using this to settle their transactions in the evening. XRP is going to be, some people say, XRP is going to be huge one day. Now, I can't tell you how huge that is what's coming out of the shadows that XRP is the currency to go to for banking. Well, if banks adopt XRP world over, it probably will, it probably will be huge. It would be like somebody buying Bitcoin at $1 and then selling it for, you know, $30,000. That's the future of XRP, by the way. So if those of you who, who decide to may make an investment after your, you know, investigative uh, investigation and research, and you do find the information credible and true, and you decide to, to invest in it, then I believe that you will benefit many, many folds out of this. Some of you... Some of you may even become millionaires out of this endeavor. But So I'm giving you an early heads up, thumbs up, you know, for XRP, USD. That's the, that's the symbol. Like I said before, you only invest in it if you feel that, you know, the, the I's dot and the T's cross and you feel, yep, this is something for me. And you're going to put your money away and leave it there. You're not going to just run, you know, put it in today and, and try to cash out next week. No, you're going to have to leave your money in there for the next three to five years because you're looking at big gains on this. This is going to be same as as people who invested in BTC, Bitcoin, when it was $1. I, you know, I, you probably know of somebody and I know of somebody who's on the internet who bought Bitcoin when it was $1. By the way, that man today is a multi multi millionaire. He lives in Dubai, multi millionaire. I would probably would even go so far as to say he might even be a billionaire, because he invested that money that he that he reaped from the Bitcoin, and he invested it somewhere else. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly where he invested it after he received it, uh, you know whatever his millions were, and he may even be a billionaire. And, and it happens to be a black guy. Yeah, he's not white. So don't say, oh, only white people do it. No, you don't have to be any particular color. You can be black, you can still be right. You can be white, you can still be right. You know, so this ideology that people have that white is right and black is wrong is totally foolishness and, and of course, not, not correct. 
So you all have the opportunity given to you. Now, how many of you take that opportunity is entirely up to you. Okay, you know, so you think about what I just said. I'm going to record my other part of my message separately because I think that let's keep this as update to the news what's happening around the world and let's keep the second part of the message about manifesting and why you should do certain things because that will help to encourage you so I don't want to mix it with this message it's already 20 minutes and I want to just send this on by itself and I want to send you the other message as a separate message so this is the so so far update what's going on in the east and the Middle East and Israel and Ukraine and all that also there, there is other things that are going on, but I, I think that they are developing. They are developing, uh, developing news, developing things. We'll probably speak about them maybe another time. So have a wonderful Sabbath, a wonderful next week, and uh, until you know, until next time, Shabbat Shalom to you.